April 19th, 1775. Legend says that the shot heard round the world and conquered sparked our war of independence. But the heaviest price in lives took place right here in Arlington, then the village of Monotomy. And the Jason Russell House here at 7 Jason Street was ground zero on that bloody April 19th. Since this home was purchased by Arlington Historical Society in 1923, it has undergone countless renovations to clarify the events of that fateful day. A hundred years later, this home is still revealing some fascinating secrets, thanks in part to the adjacent Smith Building, which now serves as a new museum. We are planning uh, some kind of an exhibition to follow this one in a similar kind of style um, that will cover uh, kind of reflections and other celebrations of the 250th over the years. The Jason Russell House and the museum that we're standing in are both open for the season, Saturdays and Sundays, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, the Jason Russell House is by guided tour uh, and the, um, this exhibit is uh, self-guided. So, and they're um, both open at the same time. I was absolutely fascinated with the Pompier ladder for two reasons. First of all, how did it work exactly? What's the thing about that giant hook up there, very evil looking. And second of all, how did it not break in use? Because look how skinny and delicate it is, especially that center spine. It has uh, a cross section of no more than one inch by two inches. How come it didn't break under the weight of a fireman and fireman's clothing, let alone somebody on the fireman's back? How this was used was, first of all, you had to be uh, a very good athlete in super condition. So imagine you are, there's a burning building in front of you, there's a guy about to die of uh, smoke inhalation on the third floor. You have this ladder in hand, you run toward the building and you throw it, at least the hooked end of it, up to the second floor, he's on the third floor, and the hook pierces the window, breaks the glass if necessary, and hangs on the sill. You get on the ladder from, from the ground, climb up the ladder, and throw yourself into the room of the second floor, okay, and then lean out <clears throat> like this and hoist the, hoist the ladder up to the le level where he is, get out and climb up again, presumably put him on your back, sounding heavy, isn't it, and climb down and save his life. Sounds simple? No, it's not. <laughs> Through all of that and all of that weight, how come it doesn't break? It hangs from a hook, remember, so it's always straight up and down. There's no lateral force to break it. And also, the, this very skinny spine is not all wood. Embedded in it is a cable of about one eighth inch diameter. And that cable is there to absorb any other forces that might come along. All of this life-saving with this device was going on between about 1850 and 1950, probably first in France. And it's fun to realize that even though our modern firefighting equipment involves trucks with not ladders so much as telescoping stairways, you know, and yet, we still refer to that vehicle as a hook and ladder truck. Okay. You're very open about your journey as a pastry chef with your blog on your website. Yes. I was wondering, what does that level of transparency between you and your clients mean for you? I grew up where if you really liked a recipe for whatever reason, people had a hard time sharing it. And I'm not sure why, but I am the opposite of that. So I, I'd like to share whether it's experiences, whether it's good stuff, bad stuff, anything like that, I think it's all necessary. So um, it's important to be transparent as far as I'm concerned. Valenza's was raised by parents who owned a fast food restaurant and admits she's still adjusting to the more laid back atmosphere of this Arlington bakery. She's also encouraged by the steady pickup in the aftermath of COVID, which hit just one year after she opened shop in September of 2019. But Valenza's said if she can get through this, she can get through anything. Um, I've been in business my whole life with my parents, and um, I didn't really thought about it, um, although I'm, I'm really proud of it now, yeah. What pastry would you recommend to people who have never been in before? I like the Galacto Burico, which is the Greek custard, which the 
customer previous um, just picked up. So it's an egg custard. There's a little bit of vanilla. Um, and I put lemon zest in my recipe to make it mine. So, um, and if you, you know, there's a lot of syrup in there and the phyllo dough, which is a traditional Greek pastry. So that's my favorite. Yeah. She now plans to expand, occupying the unit next door, which just happens to be next door to Fat Greek on the other side. A combination like this is sure to attract customers to a taste of the Mediterranean. If you're looking for a little taste of Greece, sweet or savory, definitely check out Arlington Bakery. Reporting for ACMI News, this is Lee Rice. Welcome, traveler. Care to join me for a story? I'm a little concerned about the slight possibility that Dylan is in this portal. <sighs> oh, that's Ooh. so true. How Thank you. Think what I was wondering is how, how many drow exactly are coming through? Like, that's... And also, are they just handing out sunglasses? Also, That's why? Fun. Also, yeah. Why what do they want? That? Well, they want to come on vacation. I mean, isn't this the... Wouldn't I... Would, <gasps> is, is it common knowledge that the Underdark is dark and underground? Based on you, context. Caitlin, roll me an insight check of your own knowledge <laughs> of what the words under and dark <laughs> are. <laughs> <laughs> What's my modifier? According to this conversation... <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> Underdark is underground and very dark. For you, Caitlin, you have no idea. Your character would know, but you, Caitlin, no idea. I bet it's nice and green there. <laughs> I want to jump on the barrel and then onto the upper upper deck. Cool. Roll me an acrobatics check. Oh, I didn't think about that. Um, acrobatics. That's 18. 18. Yeah, you managed to, uh, even at your four foot two stature, you managed to make your way towards the back of the ship, hop up on that barrel, and leap up towards <laughs> the top, uh, grab the edge and pull yourself up. Uh, that used... Roughly five feet of your movement. Okay. So you have left. the rest of your 45 feet of movement. 50. I have 50. You have the rest of oh, right. it left. <laughs> I shouldn't have. Uh, okay. Everybody at home, we want to warn you, this is very preliminary, but we at the Department of Apocalypse Preparation may have found a reproducible alternative to breathable oxygen. Now, according to the formula provided by Look at this, Ma. We hit the jackpot. There's got to be 12, 16 months worth of oxygen in your bunker. How, how the hell did you guys get down here? You know what? You were right. Greedy government types trying to keep it all for themselves. How many of our tax dollars do you think went into this facility anyhow? Wait a minute. Wait, hang on. You were the choosemans. Those guys that Doolers was talking about on the tape. And that gross lady, well, you gotta be Carol. ACMI News told you about Arlington residents recently discussing where additional multifamily housing could soon be located in Arlington. A near four hour long forum at Town Hall Auditorium late last month was not short of input. Hello, I'm Reagan Finch. And I'm Lee Rice. We're glad you could join us. We are now days away from Arlington's November 7th special election, when Arlington residents will vote on a $7 million override for fiscal 2024 and possible tax relief for eligible seniors. Are you ready to cast your vote? Here's the latest. Thanks, Nick. We are now on the cusp of Halloween, which means ghosts, goblins, apparitions, and zombies will be begging you for candy on Tuesday, October 31st. And it appears Arlington is ready to receive the hundreds of trick-or-treaters with a strong appetite for sweets. Here are some of the decorations we saw all over town this year, and we brought back some oldies, but some goodies. That'll do it for this week's edition of ACMI News. I'm Summer Maxwell. And I'm Reagan Finch. Thanks, as always, for joining us. And have a great week, everybody. And have a very happy, possibly bone-chilling Halloween. What is happening here?
<gasps> oh my god. 